And then we've got position of the handle. Uh, so for starting, if I turn it to the side here, again, to start this up, there's a safety mechanism down in the bottom of the base that in its upright position does not let me start the machine. So I've got to get it at about 10%. And sometimes you'll move it back and you'll find uh, it didn't start. So you move it back just a little more. until you find a place that it starts. That let that magnetic slide or safety catch release, and now you can start. And that's just to keep you from accidentally starting it in the upright position, uh, where depending on what plate you've got in the bottom, if you do that, these things may swing all the way around and hit you in the ribs, which is not a, a good experience. So get it tilted back to the right position where it starts up and you'll be ready to go. After that, we can talk about, again, running position. When I'm running it up and down the floor, what way am I going? How do, they ha how do I have the, uh, the chassis positioned? Um, and basically, when we're running it up and down the floor, we want to run it just like this, which uh, we'll call perpendicular to my path. So, and that's because if you think about the weight of this machine and how it's distributed, even though now I have weights on it, the main cutting, even though it's cutting in a circle, uh, it's feathering in the front and cutting more in the back. Probably from about five to seven o'clock is my heavier cut and it's feathering on the front. So we will always start at the wall and we'll go up and back, again, perpendicular this way and back in the same path. Then we'll move down uh, about half the width of my drive plate down and back in the same path. So again, we're cutting in the back and feathering in the front and we're moving away from the wall. So I'm cutting and feathering, cutting and feathering as I'm moving back. That's position one. Position two, if you need to be a little bit more aggressive, because we know we're cutting heavier between five and seven, I just wanna get that cut point a little more so it's moving more across the grain than with it the whole time. That'll give me a little heavier cut. So in this instance, I would, my path would be to start at my wall down here and move down the wall in this position, but then I'm going to straighten it back out and be in my perpendicular position so that I'm feathering as I'm coming back. If you get into a real nasty floor where you're really having to be what you feel is more aggressive, especially again, maybe like this on the first cut, then you could go with that more aggressive angle both ways up and down the floor. So I've got it turned like this as I'm moving right to left. And then when I come back, I've got it this way, again, moving that cut point up and around a little bit so that it's cutting heavier you know, across the grain, uh, which will just give me a more aggressive cut. Now, if you do that, we would definitely recommend on your successive cuts that you do the perpendicular method just to make sure you're cutting, feathering, cutting, feathering, um, and not cutting, 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 uh, as that this method would do. And the last one, uh, position as well, I'll call the lawnmower. And that's if I've got it in this position. So my heavy cut is all the way in the back. I'm feathering in the front. And so I'm gonna move again from the, the wall towards my backside all the way down. And then I'm gonna move in the same path backwards so in essence, the theory is, as I'm going this way, uh, I'm cutting heavier uh, because I'm one, I'm pushing against the machine to move it down the floor. My cutting is in the back. And then as I'm coming back this way, my feathering side is in the front and I should be feathering the whole way back. And again, if you have to do that method, uh, the lawnmower method, any of your subsequent cuts, we'd recommend moving back to the perpendicular method to make sure you're getting that good uh, cutting and feathering, cutting and feathering as you're moving across your floor. So those are the four different uh, positions and angles and directions that we'll kind of move with this machine as we're generally working a floor. Um, but remember, we talked about this being all directional. So if uh, I come across a floor that I have to go 45 degrees across the floor, uh, or I've got to go, you know, again, completely up and down or across, like my hallway is laid uh, across. I can go straight up and down that floor, although I would generally work that in the perpendicular method anyway. 
Um, but just know you can go any direction with this and not worry about putting the crazy cross grain scratches in it like you would with a belt sander or edger uh, or any other machine other than a uh, Bono power drive. And keep those things in mind and you'll be on your way to creating beautifully flat floors every time, every day with your Bona Power Drive.